This video introduces higher order partial derivatives, such as second order partial derivatives. Right at the beginning of subject three in this machine learning foundation series, the calculus one subject, we started it off by talking about this example where a car traveled away from home, accelerating towards a convenience store or something where you pick up some snacks, the vehicle is stationary here, and then you get on the highway and you're on cruise control at this point, always at the same speed. So we talked about this example in a lot of detail then. I'm just going to quickly recapitulate it. The idea here is that the curve is distance over time and the tangents to the curve, so each of these lines, represents speed because the slope, m, is equal to change in distance over change in time, which is speed. So that's our first order derivative of the curve. Now, if we at every single time point, calculate the tangent, calculate the slope of the curve, we can then plot those tangents as a second plot. And that would be a plot of speed over time. So the orange points here correspond to the orange tangent lines here. The red dot here with a speed of zero corresponds to this tangent line here with a speed of zero. And then this line here is this green dot is at the speed of one. So you can see that the first derivative of this chart is this chart of speed over time. Now, if we take the derivative of this, so if we draw a slope line here or here or here, that slope line is the second derivative, the second order derivative of distance over time. And that happens to represent acceleration. So it's a change in speed over a change in time. Yeah, and we can call that acceleration. So how do we take that concept of higher order derivatives and apply it to partial derivatives? Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that in machine learning, higher order partial derivatives are used to accelerate gradient descent. And we're going to talk about that in a lot of detail in subject eight on optimization at the end of this machine learning foundation series. So you're going to need this theory for them. And here is an example. So consider the following first order partial derivatives. We're going to use this equation here and start off by calculating the first order partial derivatives. And then on the subsequent slides, we'll calculate the second order partial derivatives. So if we differentiate with respect to x first, then this term doesn't have an x in it. So it's just a constant. It becomes zero. This term here, it has 5y as the constant. While we differentiate x, x to the power of 1 according to the power rule becomes 1 times x to the power of 0, which is just 1. So in this term, we're left with 5y times 1. And then in this term here, according to the power rule, x squared becomes 2x. So these terms simplify to this, 2x plus 5y, and then obviously we can just get rid of the 0. So this is our first first order partial derivative, del z del x, and then del z del y. In this case, x is a constant, and so it becomes zero. This term is pretty similar to what we did over here. Now five x is the constant. We differentiate y, that becomes one. And in the third term here, two is the constant. We differentiate y squared, that becomes two y. Simplifying this a little bit, Zero obviously disappears. 5x times 1 is 5x plus 4y. So those are our first order partial derivatives. So I'm going to take screenshots of these first order partial derivatives and bring them to the top of this slide here. So now we can talk about second order partial derivatives. So there's two types, unmixed and mixed. We'll deal with the unmixed ones on this slide and the mixed ones in the next slide. So for unmixed, we differentiate with respect to the same variable again. So if we start with del z del x and differentiate with respect to x again, we can annotate that with this notation here because we're differentiating twice and we're differentiating with respect to x twice. So we simply drop in our del z del x here. And when we differentiate it, 
The rules are the same as first order partial derivatives. So 5y, this term doesn't have x in it, so it's just a constant, it becomes zero. And this first term, it has a two, so that's the constant. X, when we differentiate it according to the power rule, just becomes one. And so we're left with two times one plus zero, which is just two. The second second order partial derivative of the unmixed variety is with respect to y. So again, here we have del z del y, and we differentiate it again with respect to y. So here's that notation again, similar to what we had here, but obviously now we have a y instead of an x that we're differentiating with respect to twice. And so yeah, drop in del z del y in here, differentiate with respect to y. Now 5x is a constant, so that becomes zero. 4y, 4 is a constant, y when we differentiate it just becomes one, and zero plus four times one is four. So here are our two unmixed second order partial derivatives. For the mixed partial derivatives, we've got our first order partial derivatives up here again for convenience. With these second order partial derivatives, as you might have guessed, we mix which variables we differentiate with respect to. So let's start off with del z del y, and now differentiating with respect to x. So here's how we annotate that second order partial derivative, and here's how we do it. So again, no surprises here, we just gotta work through. So we've got del z del y. When we differentiate it with respect to x, 4y is a constant, so that becomes zero. And 5x, 5 is the constant, x when we differentiate it becomes one. Five times one plus zero is five. So that's our first mixed second order partial derivative. And the other one is the other way around, of course. So we start with del z del x, and we differentiate it with respect to y. Again, here's how we annotate it in the Leibniz notation. So del z del x, differentiate with respect to y. Now x is the constant, it becomes zero. Five y, five is the constant. Y when we differentiate it becomes one. Zero plus five times one is five. Now that both of these came out to five is not a coincidence. So this theorem was noticed by a number of people, including a Frenchman, Clairon, a German named Schwartz, and a Brit named Young, that under certain common conditions, the mixed second order partial derivatives are often equal to each other like this. And now for a note, a quick note, on higher order partial derivative notation. <laughs> So if we have z as a function of x and y, then the unmixed second order partial derivative, we've already been using this Leibniz notation, as I've mentioned at least once in this machine learning foundation series. Leibniz notation is my favorite because it includes both variables, and so it makes things very clear, especially when we're canceling out terms in, say, the chain rule. But all four of these notations are equivalent, and so you could see any of these in the literature, or you're welcome to use any of them yourself. So in this notation here, similar to the Leibniz notation, except we're including the function name instead of the variable z. And the other kind of class of notation is this subscript notation. So we have the function name f, and then in subscript we have x twice, because we're differentiating with respect to x, and then with respect to x a second time. And same idea with the differentiation operator. We've got the subscript x and x, indicating the second order unmixed derivative with respect to x of function f. So yeah, all four of these are the same. For the mixed second order partial derivatives, things are a little bit trickier to follow, but just bear with me. So the Leibniz notation first. We've already been using this notation in this video. So we're saying that we differentiate with respect to x, and then after having done that, we differentiate with respect to y. And with the function notation, that's the same thing. So these are equivalent, and that's probably pretty obvious given what we've already talked about. So the second listed partial derivative is the one that we performed the partial derivative with respect to first, so the first order partial derivative. And that's because we're applying this second one to that first one. And that is the common way that we've always used the differentiation operator, just like it is here. So with the subscript notation, it's the other way around. So this is the first variable that we differentiated with respect to. 
and this is the second. Same thing with the differentiation operator. So these are all equivalent, even though we put the variables in the opposite order here relative to here. Hopefully it makes sense why. Boom, and that's the final topic of this big juicy segment on gradients and partial derivatives. I've got an exercise for you on higher order partial derivatives coming up, but other than that, we're done. Congrats on sticking through it. Nice, so to recap this segment that we just finished on machine learning gradients, we covered partial derivatives of multivariate functions, learning what multivariate functions are and how to calculate the partial derivatives of them. We learned the partial derivative chain rule, which as we saw later in the segment is really important to machine learning. We learned about the quadratic cost function and we learned about gradients. So gradients being all of the partial derivatives of cost with respect to all of the parameters in our model. We learned a bunch more about gradient descent and had lots of visualizations on how we descend the gradient of cost. We talked about what backpropagation is and its relationship to gradients. And then most recently, we talked about higher order partial derivatives, such as second order partial derivatives. So as a quick reminder about where we are in my Machine Learning Foundation series, we are working our way through this Calculus 2 subject, the fourth subject in the Machine Learning Foundation series, and we're getting near the end of it. In this Calculus 2 subject, we've already finished our review of Introductory Calculus. That was the first segment. We are right now wrapping up segment two on machine learning gradients. And coming up next is the third and final segment in the subject on integrals. See you there. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.